Fixing, cleaning, formatting and working with USB and hard drives can be a pain, but not if you have the right tools. Let me show you what I use. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. If you use USB drives, hard drives, SSDs, NVMe or any other sort of storage devices, you need some way of keeping these in good working order. Especially if you're swapping them around your retro gaming systems, Raspberry Pi projects or any other sort of work involving mass storage. So in this video I'll walk you through my setup for managing my disks. So we're going to cover formatting to various specifications, cleaning partitions from drives, resizing drives, recovering lost data and cloning drives. Now there are a number of applications that help you do this, but my preferred choice is the free version of Minitools Partition Wizard. Now if you've watched my modding and single board computer videos, you'll have seen me using this, but in this video I'll show you how to make full use of this software to solve all your disk problems. Now this is a Windows only application, so if you're using Linux or Mac OS, you'll need to find a similar application for these platforms. Now to install Partition Wizard, you just need to go to the main website at www.partitionwizard.com. From there, just click into the home menu and then select the link for the free version. Now when you download this it will come down as an .exe file that you simply need to save onto your computer and then run to install the software. Now mostly you can use all the default settings but it will ask you about installing something called Shadowmaker or at least the version I'm running here does. Now again that is a backup device, um, again there's no need to install that if you don't want to. Um, so here I'm just going to skip that installation as well. But once everything's up and installed, then you should have the application ready for use. Now, one of the main tasks that I use this application for is when I am either using or reusing a drive, and then I need to make sure that it's properly cleaned and prepared for formatting. Now, if you've been using any sort of single board computer like a Raspberry Pi or just setting up a Linux boot disk, then you'll know that these systems can create a range of disk partitions formatted in various ways with potentially hidden partitions that normal tools just can't see. Now, again, this is why we're using a specialist application like this one, and this is where it does come into its own. So if I plug a drive into my Windows PC, even if it has non-Windows compatible sections, um, you'll be able to see and manage them. Now, now partitions then, um, these are, are simply the way that your computer can split up a drive into smaller sections that can then be treated like individual drives in their own right. So on this Raspberry Pi boot drive, which is for, for RetroPie as you can see here, um, you'll see a couple of partitions. So we have a boot um, partition formatted as FAT and then a RetroPie data section formatted as an EXT4 um, disk, which is one of the Linux formats. Now if we were to try and clean this drive using a standard window formatting tool, it might not be able to clean the whole disk. But using Partition Wizard then, we can simply go to the drive letter, right click that and select to delete all the port partitions. And this will clean the drive formatting and prepare it for our next um, project. Now with this particular software, Partition Wizard, um, the operations that we're going to perform on our disk don't get um, performed straight away. Um, instead, all of our tasks are lined up in our task list, as you can see over here. Now this gives us a chance to verify what we're doing before we're altering the disk, and also to verify that we're doing it on the right disk. So if I'm happy now to clean the drive, I simply click the apply button, and that does the actual partition deletion. So now that we've cleaned our drive, we can look one step deeper into the base structure of our storage. Now if you look at the drive letter area, you'll see that it's listed as an MBR drive. Now this is the older structure for the way that the drive is organised. Now the newer version is called GPT, uh, and that's needed if you want to use a drive larger than 4 terabytes. 
Now we are getting here into the more technical aspects of drives and I did make a video looking at this drive structure and what it means. So do, do please have a look at that so you understand what's going on. But in essence then, MBR drives will work with most computers and consoles, including your retro machines such as your Nintendo Wii, Xbox, PlayStation and so on. But they do have, that, as I say, that 4 terabyte um, size limit. GPT drives then do give better for performance uh, for computers that can use them. And of course, those are going to be your more modern laptops and, and newer consoles. So you get to choose how to structure your drive. And if you want to change the low level formatting, you can simply do that again using this partition wizard. So we're now ready to partition and format our clean drive. So first off, we need to create at least one partition. So if I right click on the unallocated space in my drive, I'll get a pop up menu and from here I can then create a new partition. Now partitions can be any size you want up to the currently available space on the drive. So if you wanted to split this drive into two logical drives, in other words you want to let the computer think that you have attached two separate um, storage devices, then you can create two partitions, and just the same as, as, as we saw in that RetroPie drive that we had started with. More commonly though, um, you'll probably just want to create a single primary partition that uses the whole drive space, and, and that's what we'll do here. So once we have the partition, we need to specify a format for it. So again, in this tool here, it lets us specify the format as we create this partition. So here, I'm going to be using this in my Windows PC as a data drive. So I'm just going to set it up as an NTFS drive. So on the format choice, um, you do need to be aware of what format um, is going to work with the system that you're setting up. So you can see there are lots of options here. Uh, so for example, a lot of my console modding videos will use the standard FAT32 format for their drives. And sometimes we'd have to specify a specific cluster size for those. Um, but again, um, th th you'll, ha you'll have to make sure that you understand what you need for your project. But again, depending on what you want to do, Partition Wizard will let you do that much more easily. Again, the standard Windows formatting tool does not give you all of these options. So once we've set up our options and clicked OK, again, you'll see my tasks list um, building up here. So I'd have a little queue. So let's just apply that to our clean drive and that will then partition it, format it, and it is now ready to use in our Windows PC. So we've now seen how to clean and create a new blank drive. But what if we want to make a copy or backup of a drive? So here I've got an SD card from my hack Nintendo Wii. Now, now this allows me to play any Wii or GameCube game on my Wii console just using backup game files. And if you want to know how to hack yours, then just watch this video. So I want to copy this SD card to a bigger capacity card to give me more space for my game files. And I can easily do this with this tool. So as you can see, I've got my original SD card here and a brand new 128 gigabyte card, which I'm going to copy it onto. So first of all, I'm going to have to clean the new card. So this one is straight out of the box, but it has been factory formatted with two partitions. So I'm going to clean those off to give me a fully unallocated drive. So next, we simply need to copy the partition from the Wii drive into that unallocated space using the copy wizard. So we simply select the partition that we want to copy. We then specify where we want to copy it to. And we then get this copy dialog appearing. So the software understands that the new drive has more free space than the old. So it's offering to resize the partition as we copy it over. So this lets us use the full free space on the new drive. Now, of course, we could just copy and then manually resize the partition if we wanted to. So once this has finished, we've effortlessly doubled the capacity of our console's internal storage. Well, that's pretty much the main tasks that you want to do with your drives. So you can now clean and recover used drives, and that includes fixing badly formatted drives. You can then format them to exactly the format you need and copy over various drives and partitions to your new devices.
Now, of course, there are a whole range of other features in this package. Um, some of these, of course, are available in the free software, but some, like the copy system disk and data recovery options, only come with the paid versions. So do give this software a look. It's a very powerful piece of kit, and I actually use it for my daily drive cleaning, formatting, and all those other tasks for my single board computers, consoles, and PCs. Now, I hope you found this video useful. If so, please do click that like button and subscribe to my channel for more tips, making, modding, and electronics projects. I look forward to seeing you again very soon, and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.